All right, after a long hiatus, I am back. Um, transition to this new room that I'm in. As you can see, the lighting is not as good as the other room I was in. This room kind of has an arched ceiling. You can kind of see it in the corner over here as well. Um, and so the light doesn't kind of reflect straight down from a, a ceiling like that. It's sloped um, like they did in the old room. So uh, I'm gonna work with this from here going forward. Um, I'm probably gonna try and invest in some new lights, but you know, it, it's difficult right now with finances and stuff like that. So this is what we're working with. I did come at a certain time of day so that there wouldn't be light from the evening light reflecting on the board coming through the window. And uh, it's got the best lighting I'm gonna get in this room without purchasing special lighting equipment or more than I already have. I do have a light over here that makes it a little bit better. You can see its reflection on the side over here. Okay, so. Uh, we are doing the 2018 AMC 10B problem number 16. Uh, before we go through this, actually, let's read the question first. Uh, let A sub 1, A sub 2, all the way to A sub 2018 be a strictly increasing sequence of positive integers such that A1 plus A2 all the way to A sub 2018 is equal to this expression what is the remainder if we were to cube each of these, add that up, and then divide it by six? So clues in the problem about how to approach it. First off, the remainder. What is the remainder when divided by six? That's a good sign that if you have the skill, you can apply number theory, specifically modular arithmetic, to attack this problem. Um, where do you get that skill? Uh, the best way to get it, uh, in my opinion, is the intro to number theory book from Art of Problem Solving. Um, someday I'll link to that, maybe in this video there'll be a link on the side, I can point to it like all those fancy YouTubers do, and you'll be like, a little link will pop up, and you'll like click it, and then you'll go there and get it or something. But I'm not uh, partnered yet with YouTube, and you can't do those things until you're partnered. So, uh, that it is what it is. Anyhow, well, uh, you can find it, like they have a website, you've got Google, search it you know how that works okay so modular arithmetic we're gonna need some skills in modular arithmetic to understand how it works so I'm gonna if you want to skip to the problems explanation I will put it in the link down below in the description you can skip directly to that if you're very comfortable with modular arithmetic if you have any kind of weak spot on it you don't fully understand it or grasp it you might want to watch the next part I'm gonna break down a couple concepts within it First off, um, what is it? What is mod? You know, um, so if I've got a number like, uh, I don't know, eight, and I want to put it into mod six, we call it. Basically what we're saying, we use this symbol, this means congruent, okay? So eight is congruent to two mod six, we say. And what does that mean? It just means that the remainder when I divide eight by six is two. Okay, and it's not just eight that has that. I could do different numbers by adding six to this. 14 will have the same remainder. Uh, you can even go into the negatives. You'll see me do it in some problems. Uh, this is congruent if I subtract six to negative four mod six. How does that work exactly? Well, you can think of this as six times zero plus two. And this is six times one plus two and six times two plus two. So obviously this is six times negative one plus two. And so it still has the remainder of two from the multiple of negative six. We don't usually think of negatives when you're doing uh, remainders in grade school, elementary, middle school type, of type time. So it's kind of a, a thing unique that we use in, in modular arithmetic. We don't actually need to go into the negatives for this problem. Um, so let's go to the next piece of information we wanna know. If I take a number like eight, and I add it to another number, say 13, um, and I also take 13 and we, we call it modding it out, right? So 13 modded out, when it's, right, its remainder basically, is one mod six, because obviously six goes into 12 and leaves a remainder of one. Now what's interesting is that if I add these two, it's equal to 21. This is not the symbol for congruent, by the way, in geometry. That one has the tilde above it like that, or whatever you call it in your uh, corner of the world. Um, so 21, if you think about it, it's congruent to, six goes into 18, it's gonna have a three mod six is how we write it, okay? And then 
think about that. That is the sum of the modded out values or the sum of the remainders of 8 and 13. And so when you add two numbers, you actually can add their remainders instead. And that's going to be really important in this problem. Um, it doesn't matter if it goes over as well. If I did like 11 mod 6, right, that would be congruent to 5 mod 6. And I also added, I don't care, uh, 34 mod 6, right? We would say that that's congruent to 4 mod 6. Well, if I add these two numbers, I'm going to get 45 mod 6. Well, it's not really modded out yet, but I don't care. Um, 45 modded out would be what? It would be 3 mod 6. Okay, so when you add 5 and 4, you get 9, and that number is congruent to this one in mod 6. So it doesn't matter if it goes over. All of that's going to work out just fine. All right, that's point number one. Uh, point number two with modular arithmetic. Um, if you take something like 8, right, and we say 8 is congruent to, it can be anything. Let's say we did it in mod 5, right? If we did 8, it's congruent to 3 mod 5, okay? And you were to square this side right? You would get 64, right? 8 squared. And if I was to mod that out in mod 5, it would be congruent to 4 mod 5. Now, if I square 3, I get 9. But 9 is also congruent to 4 mod 5. So you can actually take both sides to the same power and it works out. This is going to have a big impact on the 2018 to the 2018 situation. Now, if you look on the AOPS solutions, and I'm sure several of you did this too. In fact, I even did this at one point because I thought maybe this is a way to attack the problem. Some of you are familiar with the theorem that says that if you add one cubed, right, you get one, and two cubed, you get eight. And if you add one plus eight, it's nine, which happens to equal one plus two squared, right? And this keeps going, actually. Um, if you do 3 cubed, it's 27, and if you add 1 plus 8 plus 27, which is 1 cubed plus 2 cubed plus 3 cubed, uh, you will get 35, 36, which happens to be 1 plus 2 plus 3 squared. And so people said in, some of the, in one of the solutions, you might have seen in other places too, that you can just replace this with 1 plus 2 plus 3 and end at 2018. Um, actually, no, you can't. And the reason why is because uh, if you're adding 1 plus 2 plus dot 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 plus 2018, it doesn't equal 2018 to the 2018th power. And so it's kind of like, uh, it's, it's not a good assumption to make. This is true, this fact right here, you can keep going as far as to n if you want to. But the problem is if you don't start at one and the next number's not two, for example, if I do one cubed plus three cubed, it's 28, it's not one plus three squared. So the numbers have to be exactly one, two, three, and one, two, three, and so on. You also can't start from two. Two cubed plus three cubed is 35. That's not five squared, two plus three. So that's not really a valid solution. Um, it works. It happens to give the same answer that this one does, uh, but that's just a coincidence. So um, let's see how we should approach this problem now. Um, all right, so this is the start of the problem solution, actually how we're going to go about it. Uh, let's get rid of this congruent sign because I'm OCD or something. Um, so anyways, we are going to say uh, we've got 1 plus, or whatever we got here, a sub 1 plus a sub 2, and we're using mod 6 because we're dividing the cubes by this. This is kind of where you kind of have to explore. It's, this is the deserted island principle in action. You might not know how, if this can't be 1 to 2018 and you've given yourself that information that that doesn't necessarily work for this, like I just explained a minute ago, then you're kind of like, how do I approach something like this? You have to take baby steps, explore in the problem. It is problem 16 only. It didn't appear on the AMC 12. It's a pretty hard problem 16. Um, there's not quite anything exactly like this to my knowledge in the number theory book. I could be wrong. Correct me in the comments if so. Um, that I remember doing anyway when I went through it. 
a couple times. So we just have to think about this. If I take a number like zero, right, and I was to cube it, right, we just want to explore, right? We're looking at the remainders of six. What are they? They are zero, one, two, three, four, and five. You can't have a remainder of six because that would be zero. It go in evenly. So if I take zero, right, and I cube that remainder, I get zero. So zero is congruent to zero, zero cubed rather is congruent to zero mod six. So we don't know what these numbers are, but we know all of them could be boiled down to their remainders. And so what we want to know is what happens with these remainders when we cube them? Just like we did the eight plus the 13, I could have added only the remainders and I still would have gotten the same modded out value, the same remainder when it's divided by six. And that's what's going to allow us, we don't necessarily need to know what these are if we know what their remainders are or their possibilities are. So uh, zero cubed is congruent to zero mod six. Well, what about one? Well, one cubed is equal to one. And when I divide one by six, I, I still get one. So mod six, right? As a remainder, I get one as a remainder. So if I go to two cubed, uh, that's going to be eight. And if I divide eight by six, hey, the remainder is two. And you kind of start to get right now that light at the end of the tunnel feeling. You're seeing it right now. You know what's coming next. It's, oh my gosh, I didn't even know that. I didn't even know that was there and neither did I. The test makers and the problem makers are such gifted people, right? They design a problem to reveal to the student some elegant piece of information that they might not have been aware. Because a lot of those people have way higher knowledge than me and higher knowledge than you probably for sure as well. And these brilliant minds hid something for you to find. If you give up in a problem, even if it's not on the test when you're in practice, you're missing out on something they're trying to show you, some kind of a elegant or beauty in math. So this is kind of what you're seeing now. It's like that aha moment. You get the, you get the hope feeling inside, like, yes, I'm gonna finish this problem. You're rounding second base and heading for third at this point. So it's three cubed is congruent to 27. And if I divide 27 by six, the remainder is three. So it's also gonna be three mod six. I'm not gonna write mod six every time and waste time. So four cubed is 64, um, and that has a remainder of four, and five cubed, last one to check, is congruent to 125, and that is going to be congruent to five mod six. So as you see, every possible remainder in mod six, it, when you're dividing by six, when you cube it, it gives you the exact same value when you mod it out. And because of what we discovered earlier about adding two numbers with different remainders, it's actually gonna be congruent to this two plus one right here, right? They're both the same in mod six. So whatever these remainders are, they could be anything. This expression is actually congruent to that expression in mod six. Right? It's going to have the same remainders for this, whatever it is, as it is for this. And that is the ultimate break in the problem. When you do this, and most of you who have experience in modular arithmetic, you could have done this. You know what stopped you? Well, maybe you didn't cross your mind, but you probably thought, oh, that's not going to help. It's not going to work. Right? I don't want to go around that corner and look down that path. It's just going to be a dead end. Right? That's the mind inside of you telling you that's your weakness. Overcome that, explore basic concepts. This is basic concept. Not that the, you knew that this was true, but what we're doing right here, if you've had modular arithmetic practice, this isn't hard. You learned this in the number theory book. You could have checked these if you wanted to, but something inside you said that's not gonna help. So many times in the test, you need to go beyond that point where you think it's not going to help and you need to just see what happens. Because once you see what happens, boom, the problem is destroyed. It is blown open. And so now we can advance to the end game of this problem. And that's going to be that this expression is equal to this. And anything it's equal to, it will have the same modded out value as well. So really, we're just asked to find the remainder of this expression when we divide it by six. This value right here, because it's equivalent to that one. They have the same value, right? So the thing is... I can just take 2018 and mod it out. 
And there's people who actually do six goes in. That's kind of a waste of time. You know if a number is divisible by six, it'll be even and it will be a multiple of three. So eight plus one is nine plus two is 11. That's not a multiple of three, but if I took away two from 11 and got nine, nine's a multiple of three. So all I need to do is take away two values from this, which would be 2016. That's six, seven, eight, nine. That's divisible by three. It's even because of the six. So it is divisible by six, which means I can take 2018 and say that it is congruent to two mod six. And now what do we do? Now we take this to the 2018th power and we demonstrated this earlier. I didn't prove it to you. I gave examples to show that it's true. You can take two values that are congruent in modular arithmetic and take them to the same power and the result will still be congruent. So then uh, now what do we do with this though? Two to the, that's gonna be a big number. By now, you know, we're looking for patterns, right? So we saw the pattern of the zero cubed, one cubed, two cubed. Let's go ahead and explore this. Two is congruent to itself mod six, of course. And two squared is congruent to four um, mod six, because when you divide four by six, it goes in zero times, remainder four. Uh, two to the third is congruent to eight, which is congruent to two mod six. I think you probably see the pattern developing now. Two to the fourth is 16, which is congruent to four mod six. And you can check a couple more if you want, two to the fifth, two to the sixth, just to be absolutely certain this pattern's not going to break, but it doesn't break. In fact, all, I think it's true for all things that mod out, they will have a pattern like this that develops. Uh, kind of like the units digit when you do like seven to the first is seven and seven squared is 49 and seven to the third. It's actually the reason why that units digit thing works. Uh, this is gonna be what, 343? Uh, for seven to the third, uh, 49 times seven, 350 minus seven, 343, right? Yeah, I should know that one, but you know, shame. Okay, so uh, seven to the fourth is going to be uh, that three at the end of 343. It's uh, like 2187, I think, or something, but I don't remember for sure. No, it's not, that's something else. Uh, anyways, seven times three is gonna end in one, and then seven to the fifth is going to uh, end in seven again, this one times that seven. What you are really doing when you notice these patterns, you're really doing modular arithmetic, right? And so you just didn't know it because they maybe didn't explain it to you at that point. You do learn stuff like this in school, not with the congruent symbol. But if you really want to get good at this knowledge, get the intro to number theory book. It's well worth the investment. Um, some of you have asked me about where you can find you know, PDFs for those. I'll talk about that in a different video. Um, it's not something I actually support, but maybe you can write the company and see what they think. Okay, so uh, back to the problem. What's the pattern? Even powers are congruent to four, odd powers are congruent to two. And we have an even power. The answer will be the four E. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a subscribe, share it with your friends, all that stuff. Um, leave any comments with any questions. Let me know how the lighting in here works. I know it's not as good. Um, I might start a buy me a coffee thing, uh, maybe help crowdfund some lighting or something like that. We'll see. If not, I get paid in a few weeks or something. Maybe I will uh, try to invest in some more lights at that time. Have a great day, guys.